I'd like to introduce you to a boy named Idin Zin. Idin Zin was a real person. He was a student from a wealthy family. 3,800 years ago, he lived in the Mesopotamian city of Larsa, part of the Babylonian Empire. His father worked for King Hammurabi. Idin Zin was studying to become a scribe or a priest or maybe a government official like his father. He wrote this letter on a clay tablet and sent it home to his mom. May the god Shamesh, Mardok, and Ilibrat keep you forever in good health for my sake. From year to year, the clothes of the young gentleman here become better, but you let my clothes get worse from year to year. Indeed, you persisted in making my clothes poorer and more scanty. At the time when in our house, wool is used up like bread, you have made me poor clothes. The son of Adad Adimnam, whose father is only an assistant of my father, has two new sets of clothes, while you fuss even about a single set of clothes for me, in spite of the fact that you bore me and his mother only adopted him. His mother loves him, while you, you do not love me. Idin Zin's letter is evidence that there are some constants in human societies like the importance of looking good and the relationship between children and parents. But it's also evidence of several changes underway at the time he was writing. At the beginning of this period, there were no cities, no states, and no long-distance trade. Yet, by 100 CE, societies across much of the planet had changed radically. Cities, states, and long-distance trade networks spread across many regions. How did these complex political and economic systems develop? How did they impact the people who lived in and near them? The agricultural revolution transformed human societies. Some communities began to settle in permanent villages. Many continued to forage. But increasingly, people relied on farming. Agrarian societies could create surplus food. That meant that they produced more than they needed, so not everyone had to farm. Eventually, some villages became densely populated, covered larger areas, and became more urbanized. They became cities, like the one Eden Zin called home. Bigger populations meant that new forms of leadership were needed to make decisions specialists like soldiers, scribes, priests, and administrators, including Adinzin's father, assisted rulers in maintaining control. Cities transformed the production and distribution of goods. Some farmers stopped farming and became specialists, making goods like leather, parchment, iron tools, or clothes, like Adinzin's mother did. Life in cities offered many benefits, such as protection from raiders, a reliable food source, and, in some places, even running water. Yet, these comforts came at a cost. Early cities were dirty and ruled by kings and elites. Residents had to pay taxes. And when a famine or war struck, the results were often catastrophic. As cities grew, so did networks of trade. The most important networks were local. Different villages, cities, and nomadic communities produced and needed different things. They traded with nearby communities who had access to different types of food and goods. But over time, trade routes grew and spread across longer distances. People began trading for things they wanted rather than only things they needed. Long-distance trade routes moved luxury goods to wealthy people who could afford them like Adin Zin's family and the king they served. As with life in cities, long-distance trade came with benefits and drawbacks. It made some people very rich, but that created inequity. Trade moved ideas and technologies to new places, improving life for many, but sometimes carrying the risk of disease and conflict. As cities and the networks connecting them grew, states developed. Larger populations required stronger governments to manage them. 
often priests and religions emerge to support rulers. There are lots of definitions for state, but the term refers to the organized way a territory is ruled. States make and enforce laws, levy taxes, and manage armies. Some rulers of states, like King Hammurabi, conquered other cities and other states and created the first empires, like the one Eden Zin called home. Eden Zin's life and the things he cared about help us understand his world. He lived in a city. He believed in gods. He hoped to serve the king rather than grow crops. As a member of a wealthy class, his social status depended on fancy clothes. Unlike most people at the time, he could read and write. Writing added complexity to human society and made the job of historians possible, preserving information for us to read 3,800 years later, telling us a story about a world that was very different from ours in some ways, but eerily similar in others. When future historians read what you've written, what will they learn about your life?